guys, my name is Benji and we are here at Doan Pond with Rodney Marquez, really one of my fishing mentors. He's just been there teaching me the ropes and uh, I really appreciate Rodney just for taking the time and always offering me advice. So it's just been a privilege and honor. Um, it's been a minute since I've hung out with Rodney today. The fishing is a little slow. There could only be one reason for that. It's the fish's fault, not ours. Um, <laughs> I so, think so. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we just want to take this time uh, to talk about a couple of uh, techniques that we like to use. And so I'm going to talk about two techniques in particular that have been super productive for me this season. And uh, one of them is the spoon. And uh, this is a cast master that I picked up from Save On Tackle. And this is a gold cast master and it's a 1 8 ounce. And so this is the size that I really like throwing uh, because it's pretty light, but you can still fling it out at the local pond. You're going to be able to get it more than halfway across that pond and cover the entire water column. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is really good for finding fish. And so it's usually one of the first things that I'll throw if I know that they've stocked, yeah. um, just to cover the pond and try to locate where those fish might be swimming. One of the tricks that I found productive for me is just swimming this thing really slow. Mm -hmm. And uh, the lightweight, so if you're gonna, if you're using something a little bit too heavy, you might get extra casting distance, but it's gonna be harder to swim that slower. That's right. And so um, that's one thing that I really love about uh, this size and this uh, cast master in particular. You can use gold, silver. Um, there's a part. There's a variety of different patterns. And so. Um, oh, God. Uh, oh. Oh. Is that a fish? Is that? <laughs> is that you, Archie? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Arthur! Right Do you feel me pulling? Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> so. <laughs> so basically, we're trying to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Benji is uh, sending like um, some uh, tips yeah. videos for fishing, but uh, <laughs> they accidentally hooked each other. Dude, it feels like a fish, man, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> Beer back. <laughs> all right, so we thought we had a fish on there. What a fantastic day, man. You just got to keep smiling. This yeah. is good vibes all day. All right. So cast masters, um, some of my fun, I think in my opinion, when the trout are biting this, it's one of the funnest ways to catch trout because it can get really, really wide open. Um, when they're biting this on every single cast, um, it's super fun. Yeah, Again, it's a fish finder, you know, just, just covering that water column, finding where they are. So really, really good option. I believe every trout fisherman should have this in their tackle box um, just to be able to really figure things out when times get tough. For sure. The second way that I really love to target um, trout and this is, might be my favorite way to target trout is with the mini jig. And it's all the rage um, for the past several years. Um, I believe Rodney Marquez might be the one responsible for bringing this on the map um, <laughs> and bringing it to light. But this is the mini jig. And as Rodney mentioned, uh, the 132 nd head per his recommendation is what I've been using for the past two years. I've had some really, really good days with this. And this is a real subtle finesse technique that you use on an ultralight rod. Um, and I like using the Phoenix Dragonfly. You want a little bit of a longer rod, um, seven, six at least to maybe an eight foot. Um, is really going to give you that little extra casting distance. A finesse application like this, you're not going to get the distance that you want, but when the trout are in close and you're able to locate them and sometimes even sight fish them, this is such a fun way to catch a trout. Super fun. So fun. The key to this is just finding the right water column, um, letting this thing drop into the right water column, experimenting and working through the water. You're just jigging the rod. Jigging you're just the rod. bouncing it. You want the nice soft, um, tip on ultralight rod. rod. The jig is going like this. Yeah. <laughs> you just want that thing to flutter and you just want this thing to bounce in the water column really slowly. The slower that you're able to reel this thing in while you're bouncing it, the more likely you are to get hit. Um, and there's a variety of different colors for this. Um, and as, as we see here, uh, yellow and white is obviously a very go-to. Yeah. But sometimes um, it's good to change things up if you're not getting bit. Um, this is more of like a grasshopper. There's like a greenish um, hue to it. Um, that's a good way. And then if they're really being finicky, you should always have something dark. Yeah. Um, something dark. Natural, and 
Yep, and, and then switching things up. I don't have any white ones in here, but if you have a white mini jig, so just figuring it out. Sometimes they want to bite different different colors from dark to light, and that can be dependent on the water um, water clarity. But these those are the two ways that I love to target trout, and I think a lot of you guys that are on the ponds are doing <laughs> the same thing. And uh, it's just such a thrill to catch trout in that way. I've been catching a few this year. Mm -hmm. yeah, may I say something, Benji, to Ab add to what you're saying? Absolutely. So when, when you're jigging that mini jig out there in the middle of the water column, we you want to play with the depth i think you've probably seen some underwater footage of trout cruising along the shoreline they're in different depths of the water so if you're playing around with your mini jig just like what uh, benji is saying jigging it and you're going a little bit lower or a little bit higher and if you're getting bit in like let's say you throw it out there and you let your mini jig fall for two seconds and you're getting bit at that two second mark in that that depth then you should always do that because that's where the trout are cruising. You want to be where the the, the, the trout are in that strike zone, right Benji? Yep. Um, as Rodney's saying, maybe one way that you can do that is sometimes just letting it sink to the bottom All right. and seeing how long it takes to get down there. And if you come back with some salad on it, some weeds, yeah. then you know you're on the bottom, then you want to pick it up a little bit higher. Right. <laughs> but really practice makes perfect right. and, it, and Rodney's exactly right. Finding the right water column of where the trout are cruising, rinse and repeat once you find them. <laughs> if you found this video helpful, be sure to check out this video where I talk about the best trout rods and reels based on your budget. Thanks so much for tuning in guys, and until next time, tie lines. <laughs>